just a little bit of a wiggle on the toes, especially if they're cold. Perhaps, I mean, if you are cold, you could take a little bit of a jazz walk. So just walk through whilst we do um, our exercises for pelvic floor at TVA. Just take your shoulders down and back, length at the back of the neck, tuck the pelvis under. Feet hip width apart, keep walking if you're cold, but otherwise pull in 100% pelvic floor TVA and then a slow release. And we're going to do 10 of these. So in and out and in, out and in, and out and in, and out, in, and out, in, and out. Try not to hold the breath and in, out, three more and in. And out, and in, and out, last one, and in, and out, 50%, so there's a little bit of pull, but not so much of having to concentrate all your energy on that. So just a little bit of warm up before we take on to the weight, so one arm up, level with shoulder, you all know this one, uh, ear down into shoulder for the neck release, reaching to the side for the shoulder glide, recenter, reach up. Try and keep the pelvis tucked under, and then over into your side bend, hand on hip. Now, a little bit different, bend the knees, sweep this forwards like a uh, sundial. So see if you can maybe um, maybe brush fingertips down onto the mat to recenter. Then we go to the other side. So ear down to shoulder, neck release, shoulder glides, recenter, reach up. Side bend, you can really take your time on this move. Now bend knees, then just go with the flow, reach it down, forward, so you're coming into like a forward fold. And then you can bring it up. Just two more. So neck release, shoulder glides, draw in that core, reach up. Side bends, then bend knees, start to breathe out, come into a bit of a flow, a bit of a release, bring it round. Last one, neck release, shoulder glide. I kind of missed this one actually this week, this uh, month, because obviously this month I've done a lot of just going straight into the free weights. I miss doing a little bit of that kind of flow stuff. Okay, we sent it. So we will go to the weights now. So pick up the weights. Going, going to go through about 10 exercises with weights but hopefully uh, they should balance out because we go sort of arms and then legs and then things like that. So take the shoulders down and back, tuck the pelvis under, eight side bends. So just reaching down, drawing the core, just see where your shoulders are at. So just try not to let your shoulders dip back or too far forwards. Just three more. Breathing in at the centre, breathing out as you go down. Then we're going to go to our squat, so check your feet are parallel, engage the arches underneath the feet, go to a front raise, and then lateral raise. Now, if you like the other, the one of each, take the one of each. So this is all stuff we've been working on this, this month. So up to you whether you want to go through. So just keep an eye on what's happening with the knees, check they're not pronating, you're squeezing glutes on that lift, don't forget to breathe, drawing in the core, keep the shoulders down and back, and it is really tempting to look down on squats, so just see if every now and again just try and look forwards. Breathing out. Coming up to four more. Quite a lot, I know. <laughs> Just went through all those arms eight times. Last one coming up to standing and it's easy twist. So just allow the weights to kind of just free fall around the body. Catch your breath, soften knees, shoulders just relaxed. 
You can look behind as well as you can bring in the head as well as the neck. Do engage the core though a little bit still. Just catching the breath. So going back to some arm work, take a really nice wide stride and you don't have to have the feet dead parallel, they can turn out a little bit. Then take like a squat, so like a sumo squat, like sumo wrestler. Now then take the big circles in front. So last week we just did this one standing, so taking it into the squat. <laughs> you could just take one weight with this if this is a little bit too much for one way. Just drawing that really big circle. Keep that pelvis tucked under, keep pulling in on the core. Then you're going the other way around. Stay down in the squat, so it's a static squat, just upper body is moving. Last one. So coming out of there to the single leg deadlift with um, the single shoulder press. So you will recognize this one. So reach up with one hand, then take that down towards the knee or the floor and recenter. Now you could swap legs each time. You have the opposite hand coming down to the opposite foot. So re reach up one hand up to the ceiling. That same hand is down to the floor, leg goes back. Eight on one side or alternate, go for 16. Good balance work this one. So engage work with the big toe for your balance. Engage the arch underneath the foot. Squeeze in the glutes, pull in the core. Do you think about the eye gaze here? So look forwards when you're upright in your shoulder press. Um, oh, I just swapped my arms over there, gosh, coordination. And then when you look, when you're taking the weight down to the floor, look down. Engaging the glutes, that glute to hamstring link here is really getting strengthened. A little bit of a softening on the knee, don't hyperextend or straighten the leg too much. Just bring that little, little knee lift in when you do your shoulder press. I've lost count. <laughs> I've really got to get better at counting, haven't I? Because I'm talking. I'm in words mode, not numbers. When I'm talking. Should we go two more? Feels about right. Then to the scapular set. So just standing on the mat, hip width. Shoulders down and back. Now do check you've tucked in your pelvis again, pull in the core. Just taking the weights behind you. Now watch the wrists, if I show you a bit closer. Try not to be in that position. So just kind of engage the uh, here so that you're not in that position. We're actually a little bit more tighter. Working like that. You could add a little bit, a bit of balance. You could just take a little leg lift if you wanted to. And then switch that over. Or if you just want to work with static, then you can really focus on tucking the pelvis under, shoulders down and back. So again, it's your choice. Length at the back of the neck. So you might be looking down at the screen, but just have a go at finding that length, crown of head going up to the ceiling. Check the elbows are in your size, they're not forwards. Up, dip forward. So, do you, do you think about the alignment there? Just a couple more. So, a little bit of work with balance here. So, you're going to go high knee, high knee, then take a bicep curl. Two, three four and then switch to three and four so if you can just kind of keep working with this high knee 
The hardest bit is actually when you just switch that over. I'm going to come off the squidgy mat, see if that helps to be on the actual floor. Again, try not to be in that position on the wrist. So think about kind of being a bit stronger in the wrist and then we're engaging with the bicep. Shoulders down and back, again pulling in the core. So another little thing you can do here is just switch. So you're holding the weights like this. So you're going in that position, which is a little bit more like triceps. Again, stay strong in the wrist. Keep the shoulders down and back. Do your little switches, use your big toe, use your pelvic floor. Squeeze your glutes, try and get this balance. <laughs> Last one. Okay, last, uh, last move with the mat and then we're gonna to go to the chair. So take a nice wide stride. Again, you can have your feet turning out slightly. Bend in the knee, take the weights down or one or the opposite weight down more than the other weight. Then take like a, you can take a star, so both arms up, then down to the other side. So, so you could take a double shoulder press in there. Again, pulling in the core, leaning forwards into this move. I'm literally bending in the elbows and pressing the weights. I know you can't see me in the, in the film. Just pressing up to a shoulder press in the centre. Do you check you tuck your pelvis in there because sometimes when we lift the weights over our head, we arch in the lower back. So just pull in the core, tuck pelvis in there. Should get that quite nice hamstring stretch on the inner thigh going down. Strengthening the knee in the, in the uh, going down to the foot. Just go three more. Hopefully getting a bit of heat in the body today after this warm up. Okay, so the next exercise, I'm going to take it seated, so I'm going to grab my chair. You could put the, you could do it seated or you could try it standing. So, your choice. It's a, it's a shoulder exercise. Core pulled in, pelvis tucked under. So we're sat here and we're going to go out for a chest press and then up for a shoulder press in together. Very simple called the Arnold press. Just press and then lift up. Length of the back of the neck, crown of head goes up to ceiling. Now do you keep an eye on what's happening here with your back so you're not arching in your back so tuck pelvis under. Sometimes we sit in chairs, so you might notice this if you work and you're at a chair, we can arch in lower back, we totally lose neutral so it's actually quite challenging doing this one sitting down. Just to keep an eye on where neutral's at. Arms getting suitably tired. <laughs> Woo. Depends how heavy your weights are really, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll go two more. Okay, so pop the weights just down. Be careful when you put them down as well. Sometimes it's a bit dodgy putting the weights down when you sit on a chair. So single leg exercise now. So you can do your, I'll leave it up to you to your choice. You could do the step back lunge, which we did, you know, the, um, a few months ago. I'm going to do the chair exercise. You could do um, the stairs. If you like the dips on the stairs from a few weeks back, you could just do single leg squats. So like that. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, ten, ten on each, uh, ten on each side, and then see if you can alternate 
and go one on one side and then the one on the other side, whichever way you're doing, and do um, 10 like that. So it'll be 10 on each side and then see if you can do an alternating, alternating 10. Okay, so whichever choice you're doing, off you go. So I'm just seeing, I'm just watching you because I'm just seeing what, what choice people go with. So if you're doing those lunges, just really watch the hips don't collapse in the middle. So when you're coming up, think about sending the hips forwards and up, pulling in the core. Yeah, the chair exercise, you're really thinking about the knee. Use the big toe, the arch underneath the foot to control that exercise. Try not to plop down on the chair if you can. So almost like you're like a feather. Oh, I like that idea that my bum's a feather. Coming down and just drifting onto that chair and then the wind's just gonna blow it back off. <laughs> Okay. When I'm when I'm running in places I shouldn't and I have to lift Zola up over a fence, I always say, light as a feather, light as a feather. And then I pick her up and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> She's had too many biscuits. <laughs> so swapping legs as well if you're ready to swap legs. So if you come back into the room, you could try one of the, we're still on the, the people in the chairs are still doing chairs. You might want to try one of the other options, like a lunge or something. Just to try something new. And then you've got the alternating one. And if you're on the chair, you can really kind of, you know, sit down, both legs come up then go straight in, so it's very much more dynamic. So then you have to you have to recenter the balance very quickly. Just two, I'm on two more, I don't know how anyone else is getting on. Great, okay, let's go down into the mat then. We're gonna do our downward dogs. So, find your own way down, whether you want a slow roll down. Dive onto the mat. <laughs> Cartwheel onto the mat. Backflip. <laughs> Just take a nice pedal through a downward dog. Um, think about what we've been doing this month is really working on like stretching around the hips as well. So that walk, the crossover walk is quite nice. If you liked that, put that one in. Quite a good way of stretching through the calf muscles, sending the hips up. So think about the stretch on the backs of the shoulders, get the head in between the arms, think about sending the hips up to the ceiling, the chest towards the thighs. So just centre the feet again, hip width, and then we're going to step forwards, left foot, we'll go for a, a nice high lunge. Just take a stretch to begin with, so take the arms up over the head, Reach the fingertips up to the ceiling. You should get that kind of hip flexory stretch to try and square the hips to the front of the mat. Push through that back heel. Engage with the feet. So scrunch up the toes a little bit for the balance. Taking a big deep breath. Then step forwards to the front of your mat. Now see if you can take five heel lifts. Now I normally do this earlier on. So see if you can just take a nice heel lift balance five times. Use your big toe, engage the core. Then cross over the legs. I'm going to show you four ways on so you can see. Cross over the legs, reach the arms up towards the ceiling, interlink the fingers so that the palms are facing each other. Take a really big stretch up, then release the hands, 
Bend in the knees as much as you feel comfortable with. See so if you can just scoop down and lift back up. Okay, and then step back to your downward dogs. We're gonna go do that on the other side. Just take a moment, deep breath in dog. Send the hips up. Big deep breath in as you breathe out. Step forwards with the right foot. Take that high lunge. Reach the arms up. Square the hips to the front of the mat. Just enjoy that really nice stretch on the front of the left leg. Engage with the toes, hold this balance. Eye gaze forwards. Again, just taking a deep breath. Get ready to step forwards then, and then go into those heel lifts. Five lifts. Engage the core. See if you can relax the shoulders. See if you can bring the eye gaze forwards instead of down. Then again, cross over the feet, reach the arms up, interlink the fingers, take a really nice big stretch. Breathing out, release the hands, soften the knees, look back towards the knees, the so chin goes into chest. Bit of a scoop, lifting up, then just step back. Last time up in dog. If you can, bring it down into a dolphin. So elbows coming down onto the mat, just sending the heart higher than the head, blood rush to the brain, very invigorating, send the hips up to the ceiling, take a deep breath here, then lower yourself down, placing the knees down, we're going to go straight into front plank, so pull in the core, pelvis under, elbows are underneath shoulders, now your choice, you could straighten legs, hold, or you might have your knees down. Just go for a really big squeeze, particularly transverse abdominis and where your tummy button sits, really pulling that in. Don't forget to breathe. Then lower down, have a 10 seconds rest. Then we'll go back up and we're gonna do the same we've been doing this month, the, the uh, roll over onto the side plank. So pulling in again. Pelvic floor TV, lift up the hips. Your choice, you could take the legs straight or knees down. It's that rolling to the side. Have a moment for a little bit of a start, leg left, then the centre and then over to the other side. If that all just feels a little bit too much, you can just stay holding your plank and really working at your squeezes. Legs can be straight as well and you can work with your full kind of full plank version, legs straight. Quite nice to you. You should feel the stretch on the feet. Should the arches underneath the back of the feet, the toes getting a really good stretch in plank. That's something I always really notice anyway, is my feet just get this really great stretch. Also a little bit of a chest stretch if you're going into your stars. Just four more then. Whichever version that you're on. Keep working with the core, keep pulling in. Keep breathing. <laughs> okay, come down, have a 10 seconds rest. The next one, um, the dreaded one, no one ever seems to like this on Thursday night <laughs> when I do it as well. Lower plank, lift up to high plank. We do eight of these. So pull in the core, lift up the hips. Now your choice, you could do this with your knees down or legs straight. Push up to the high plank, lower down, that's one. Keep working through, try and stop the hands over because it's really tempting to always push up with the same side first. And I don't think this is easy for anybody. So four more, keep coming back to the core, keep pulling in, don't let the lower back arch, keep that pelvis tucked under, shoulders down away from ears, eye gaze just to the front of the mat. Just one more for me, how's everyone else getting on? 
So we'll release with um, a cat stretch. So come onto all fours, chin into chest, tuck the pelvis under, and then just see if you can just take a little bit of a spiral. Hopefully you can find some stretches there on the back of the neck, around the shoulders. Keep drawing and putting in with the core, circle the other way around. Very gentle, quite slow. Okay, so from that point, we're going to just take an upper body twist. So just take left hand, reach up to the ceiling, let the hips drop, then threading that through underneath the other hand, and then just reach the right hand forwards. Forehead comes down onto the mat. Take the fingertips forwards if you want a little bit more. Right hand up to the ceiling, a little bit of a circle. Press three one way, three the other. Then just uncurl and we'll go to the other side. So reach the right hand up, threading it under, threading it through. Take that stretch to begin with where you just reach that left hand forward just to get that stretch on the backs of the shoulders. And if you want a little bit more, left hand up to the ceiling, a little bit of a circle, explore. Other way round. So come down onto the mat onto your front. So you're gonna you're gonna know some of these now because we've, we've been doing these all week uh, all month so it's the cobra with the quad stretch so hands just just slightly in front of the shoulders tuck the elbows in breathing out lift up breathing in bring it down then you can take the quad stretch so heel towards your bum and again i'm just going to let you go with what your body needs if you feel like you just want to hold a quad stretch for a lot longer Work with that. If you want to alternate, go through your cobras and then your quad stretches just to sort of test your mobility. The other option instead of a full push out cobra is to see if you can lift without your hands down. So that's a little bit more work with posture. So just take the time to do what your body needs. If it needs a stretch, work with a stretch. If it needs to move, just work with the movement. If it needs to strengthen, test yourself with the strengthen. Another option, you can take both heels. You take a bit of a lift, lift, lift shoulders, lift chest, lift up the knees, then you can release. Take the strengthening exercise. Whichever one you're doing, you should start feeling a bit of a release there in the quads. If you're in that full cobra, you'll feel the abdominal stretch. Should be getting a little bit more mobility in the spine. Just last one. So let's go to our glute activations. So just rest your head on your hands, squeezing in the glute, just drifting up one leg and then release. Let's see if we can get the chain. So the glute squeezes, the hamstring engages, the lower back on the other side of the body stabilizes the hips so they don't rock side to side or tilt. Breathing out there, breathing in lower. So we combined this one with the swan dive all month, so we'll do that again. So it's leg lift, and then your version of swan dive, so that might be cactus arms, lift head and shoulders looking down, release. And again, glute lift. It might be lifting up the arms as well. And release. It might be into the lift. Add in another breath, bring in an extension, and then release. Pause and take your glute lift. The full option is to do your swan dive and then take a double leg lift, so squeeze both glutes. 
Take a moment to have a squeeze, a couple of seconds, and then release. You might want to put a combination of those together. When you're doing your lifts your, um, with your upper body, if you're going without the hands down, just try and get to the same height as when you have it when you have got your hands down. Try not to look or lift at the head, so keep the crown of head in line with the spine, even on the double arm left. We're still looking down. Go to the last one, whichever version that you're doing, and then the release is going to be child's pose. So sit back towards the heels, or if you prefer puppy dogs, puppy dogs is this position. So you've got your hips over your knees, child's pose, sit back towards your heels, perhaps a little wiggle of the hips side to side. And just see if you can find your yogic breath. So breathe in through the belly. Breathe in a little bit more, fill out the rib cage, send it up towards the back of the neck. You can visualise that breath like a ball of light going from the bottom of the spine all the way up towards the third eye between the eyebrows. So from there, we're going to test ourselves to come onto all fours, knees under hips, arms under shoulders. A nice standard, so neutral, uh, neutral um, spine to pull in the core. And a nice standard here, opposite arm, opposite leg lift and recenter. After doing all those glute activations, all the posture. Just slide out, take an extension. Keep that core nice and tight, keep the hips still. Hopefully it should feel like you can keep that core really still in the middle and that the arms and legs are just like um, Barbie, just kind of move really easily. <laughs> In nice straight lines like Barbie does. I know they make like um, bendy Barbies now, they don't they? With bendy knees and things. But they didn't used to. <laughs> I gaze just to the front of the mat. Last one. So then we're going to find, uh, we're going to go on our sides, we're going to find some clams. So get yourself lined up, so knees in line with elbows, almost like you're going to tilt forward, that should feel quite nice after doing some of that extension work. Same as we've done this month, so lift the heels up, level with the hips, open, open knees and then knees together, open heels. So just working with this theme, next month I'll probably go back to bands and just doing your standard clam. But this one's quite been quite nice, really, for a, like almost hip mobility work within the within the glute med work, which is quite nice. Just going to do eight of these. Go like the feather touch as well with the feet and the knees, so we're not kind of um, flopping things onto each other. They're just very light touches. Engage the core as well. Then just straighten out the legs. Watch I plan for this. Ooh, just a double, just a lift and a stretch actually, no twist today. So lift top leg, lift bottom leg. Engage the core, lift up the rib cage, 
arm up and over, take a really big stretch and then release. Just we'll go th uh, three more, so do four of these. Just notice when you're stretching, you're not arching in the lower back. So do think about the pelvis position here as well. Just going at your own pace, working through each of the different lifts. Lift, lift, and that rib cage, that's the bit where the core has to really work. I've seemingly lost count, I think I did five. <laughs> okay, go to the other side, on the other side of the clowns. Same thing, kind of curl yourself around, line up the knees, the elbows, then lift up the feet, feet in line with hips, shoulders, open the knees, and then open the heels. Try and keep the control, the hips still. I'm going to put my hand on my hip just to keep that hip still so it doesn't open. When that knee lifts, I don't let my, my hip open. Engage the core, find that pelvic floor. If you can look forwards, try not to look down at the feet. Four more. A little light touches. Last one, then engage that double leg lift. Fill in the core, lift and lift, rib cage. Take a nice big stretch, then release. Do check on that lower back, the pelvis tucked under, we're not arching in the lower back. And lift, big stretch, and release. Quite a lot of stretching today, you should feel it quite nice uh, from the shoulders, from around the shoulders tomorrow. And two more. Quite good for swimming this one. Get the lamp. I went swimming this morning and the pool was so cold. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with them. I did. I think I managed about half an hour, which is, and then I had to get out. It was so cold. Okay, let's do on our backs then. The spine twist with the the sidekick combo, if you liked it. So T shape with the arms. Breathing out, but let both knees drop across, lower back release. Look in the other direction, chest stretch. Breathing in centre, breathing out of the side. So different versions coming in if you want them. Knees go down and then you, the top leg does your side kick. See if you can touch the foot into your hand. If you've got the space, I've got a wall. <laughs> Other option, this is a, <clears throat> a bit of an, an older one that we used to do, is tabletop, still a good one, and then extend that to the corners. So you're still going to get your hamstring stretch in there, an IT band stretch. You get a little bit of core work in as well because you've got to imprint the lower back down in the centre. So your choice is three different choices there. Maybe you just want to work with the stretch and hold in the stretch, knees down, knees bent. Just two more breaths, whichever one you're doing. <clears throat> Coming into centre then. So we're going to start with the pelvic stability exercise and then go into our 100 today. So opposite, uh, opposite knee, opposite arm is going to drop. So arms up to the ceiling, imprint shoulder blades down, imprint lower back down, knees bent. And then opposite arm, opposite knee drops to the side. Don't allow the hips to open here. So we're not, I mean, that's a very different move when the whole of the hips move. So keep the core really still. So it probably means your knee doesn't go down to the floor. Unless you've got hypermobility from in the hips, then it might. So really focus on the, the, the pelvis being nice and still. So pelvic stability exercise. So keep focusing on the core. Up 
I always notice I grip my toes on this one as well. I have to really focus on trying to let go of my feet and focus on my core a little bit more. I think my feet take over a lot of the time. And then just one more. With that idea of what the imprint feels like, we'll go to the 100 and we'll do our five sets. And your choice, you can go straight into your layers. So feel now how that imprint works. You worked really hard just then on keeping that lower back down. So try and hold that same amount of imprint through this um, five sets. Four toe taps, eight pulses, and then an eight second hold. Here we go. Okay, so four and three, staying nice and still, nice and um, stable in the core. Two and one, lift head and shoulders, pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, keep the tummy still. Four, three, two, one, slide hands to knees. Bit of a chest lift. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one, release. If you want more tabletops, in printing. Four, and three, and two, one, ready to pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, straightening legs and reach. Think about this chest lift, not just the chin to chest. Think about the bottom of the rib cage getting a lift. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Here we go, four and three, two and one, and pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Teasers if you've got them. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Two sets to go. Four and three, two and one. Tummy still for the pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time. Imprinting four and three and two and one, ready to pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, release. Take a full body stretch. Give everything a bit of a squeeze, point toes, squeeze glutes, put in tummies. Scrunch up your fists, get your shoulders up to your ears, scrunch up your face, take a really big deep breath in, and just breathing out, let everything go, take up loads of space, a couple of deep breaths. So come to the heel slides, maybe hands on hips, control the hips, think about the imprint again. Slide one heel away, recentering. Try and come back to that same feeling that we did on the pelvic stability outside, the knee to the side. That same amount of imprint, that same concentration. Using pelvic floor, TBA. So you could put here into um, this move, the chest lift, and again, try not to just pull up the neck. Think about just below the diaphragm, getting a little bit of a shift. The rib cage goes down to the hips. And you could hold in this position, or if you want more, tabletop that, single leg stretch. You're in the chest lift, and you could just put in your little dips. Outside hand down to the heel, inside to the knee. If you've got that chest lift right and you're not just yanking up with your, your head and your neck, you should really feel the burn after a couple of them. Just breathing out each time you reach forwards. Two more, whichever version you're on, you might just be on a heel slide. Then placing the feet down, cactus the arms and place the, so the elbows are down next, you know, um, alongside the shoulders. You get some length at the back of the neck, so it almost makes yourself a double chin. 
Try and imprint all of the spine down and just reach the arms out over the head behind you. Know, behind you. See if you can keep as much as the arms in touch with the floor. Keep imprinting. It should feel quite difficult to get that stretch and then bring it back down to cactus. And then again, slowly stretching up. Keep working with the imprint on the spine. This is a really good posture exercise. But also we get gravity could kind of help out a little bit with pushing the arms down into that stretch. If you want a little bit more, you could put in your double leg, um, your double leg stretch. I think my, word, my words aren't very clear today. They're not coming to me very quickly. <laughs> Don't know why. Breathing out, straighten both legs, and then come back into your cactus. You've got to imprint lower back as well as the upper back, all of the spine if you're doing that. Try not to arch in that lower back. Try and keep thinking about your double chin. Try not to let your chin draw up towards the ceiling. Two more. Quite hard, isn't it, this um, upper body exercise? <laughs> it looks, it, it sounds and looks a lot easier than it actually is. <laughs> Okay, then just place the feet a little bit closer to your bum. You can touch your heels, knees, feet hip width apart. Take a pelvic tilt. Use this like a massage on the lower back. Nice and slowly, just vertebrae by vertebrae going up through the spine. Shoulders relaxed. Then if you want more, go up into your shoulder bridge, squeeze glutes, lift up the hips, and just take a squeeze here. So interlink the fingers. Tuck the shoulder blades underneath, get some length at the back of the neck, chin goes to the chest. And just take a really full breath. So all three of us think about widening the ribcage with the breath. And then as you breathe out, you can release the hands, low, slowly lower yourself down, vertebrae by vertebrae. Coming down and hug knees into chest, a bit of a rock or a circle. Other way round, as if you could just rock yourself up to a seated position. Just quickly check time. Saving a little bit of time again to the end of the hamstring stretching again. Okay, we're going to bring the weight back in. But we're going to roll over. So, <clears throat> if you don't want to roll over, it's C-shape the lower spine. So upright position. Try not to lift the chin on that. Otherwise, find, we'll do a couple of rollbacks and then we'll put the weight in. So find your um, hover position. C-shape the spine, rock it back. Come back to your hover. Lots of nice control. So you could put a weight in here. So you take one weight, you hold onto your weight, you rock back. You could do a rollover. Come back and then see if you can do a teaser. Which is sometimes, it's surprisingly easier with the weight. So you can go to your rollover stretch and then your teasers. You can try that without the weight as well. And then you can just work with holding your stretches for a bit longer if you want. And then you can try with teasers as well, holding. So you can try it without the weight too. And actually holding onto the um, backs of the legs. That's quite hard, isn't it, to come back? <laughs> it's quite hard if you keep holding on. Just seeing what versions people are taking and going for. Okay, we did it last week, the Russian twist with the roll down. So... Again, you can grab weight, you can grab two weights, because obviously if you, if you prefer, up to you. Bend the knees, feet down, take the weights to one side, centre, the other side, vertebrae by vertebrae, halfway down, come
coming back up. Try and switch the sides over so don't always go to the same side. You can do that without weights as well. So you can just do a little finger touch to the side, center. We did that version all the way down, weights over the top for triceps, all the way back up into your twists. Try and keep some control there, so vertebrae by vertebrae, a bit like you articulate down to your shoulder bridge. Try and think about that same, that imprinting of the vertebrae, chin to chest, into your lips. Shoulders down and back. We'll go for eight of them, whichever version you're on. I've got about four more. Nice long exhales. And the last one. Okay, so I'm going to use the bookcase, I'm going to hamstring stretch, so if you want to do it with a band, we do the progressive ones, we've done it all month. Or you can just hold on to your hand, you can just lie back and hold a hamstring. Another option, if you haven't got anything and you want an intense stretch, as you can go back to the chair, is the intense um, flank stretch, that one, squaring hips to the chair. Did that, I think we did that about a month ago. Otherwise, find a door frame or a band. Put your heel into the door frame. Try and relax the upper body, so the head down. Find your hamstring stretch. Then, six seconds, push away at the back of the knee. Engage that hamstring. Five and six, breathe in. Breathe out, let go of the hamstring, but just keep that stretch there. And I often put my hand, yeah, because I've obviously got something to push against. Push my, I push my hand into my leg at that point as well. Do try and dorsiflex the foot if you can. And then eight seconds, relax, and again. Six seconds, two, three, four, five, six. Breathing in and then breathing out and you relax, you just take, a, take the focus away from the hamstring but you just keep working in that stretch. Notice what's happening with the hips, so try not to uh, like have the hips tilting or one hip lifted. One more, pushing in to whatever you've got or working with the band. Then release. Holding in that hamstring stretch. Then we'll swap legs. We we'll do it three times on the other leg. I'm gonna do my dodgy door handle. <laughs> so no one comes in. <laughs> Again, six seconds, push it at the back of the knee. Do try and keep the upper body relaxed, so the spine nice and long. Try, you know, try not to let the chin lift up to the ceiling here. I mean, even putting a cushion behind the head. Then do your release. Joe's in a windowsill. <laughs> the neighbor's probably like, what is she doing? <laughs> Again, pushing your height. You, and uh, hopefully you're counting. You're doing your six seconds. Breathe in, breathe out. Eight seconds release. Last one. Engage that hamstring. Breathe out. Do a release. Hold the stretch.
It's so much more fun stretching together, isn't it? <laughs> I'm terrible. I don't do I don't do long stretching on my own. But it's actually more fun if you're with somebody. Finish this with a spine twist then. So if you want, grab a cushion or a block. Palms together. Breathe in to get tall. Shoulders relaxed. Breathing out for your twist. Go back to thinking about that spine, those long strands, either side of the spine. Just getting a gentle little pull and a strengthen. So I was thinking next month, some of my little thoughts on some themes I was going to work with is maybe kind of um, lots of kind of feeling like touch type feeling, like so palms together, kind of fingertip work, kind of obviously a lot of the key things that we've been putting in, but two more of these, maybe a little bit more detail on what we're touching, how our fingers work, how our palms particularly as well are connecting so namaste